Good morning and uh, welcome to this uh, press conference ahead of the G7 Leaders Summit. Um, the press conference we have here with the President of the European Council and the President of the European Commission. Welcome also to the UK-based uh, journalist. A warm welcome to you, please, Mr. President. Merci. Thank you very much. Uh, the G7 has to be able to mobilize to address the major challenges we are facing. First of all, to support and promote a, a rule-based international order, show that free liberal democratic societies are best armed to meet these challenges, to push back the various threats, to beat the pandemic, and to support a project of economic prosperity so that we can all make progress together in fighting climate change. The paradox with the pandemic is this. On the one hand, the world has slowed down because of a pandemic. However, international cooperation has uh, been considerably enhanced and strengthened, and this will be the case in the coming days with this meeting of the G7 and with other international summits which uh, will be taking place, including at Brussels. Areas where G7 cooperation is particularly needed. First, global health, second, foreign policy, third, climate change, and fourth, corporatization. First, global health. We must make sure that the world is being vaccinated as quickly as possible. And the EU is at the forefront of ensuring global equitable access to vaccines, especially to developing countries, and the G7 as a whole are major producers of vaccines. The EU is the largest exporter for COVID-19 vaccines to the world. So far, we have exported more than 270 million doses, and we are top contributor to the COVID facility with over 2.8 billion euros. We will donate at least 100 million doses by the end of the year. We must also strengthen manufacturing capacities around the world, and so we'll invest 1 billion euros to boost vaccine production in Africa. We are also ready to work in Latin America and to develop projects in this part of the world. The question of intellectual property rights will likely be raised in this context. A patent waiver might sound good, but it's no silver bullet. The TRIPS agreement already offers flexibility, and we want to focus on concrete proposals, such as promoting, promoting voluntary licensing and knowledge transfers and patent pooling on mutually agreed terms. G7 leaders will also discuss how best to prepare for future pandemic, building on the Rome Declaration. And this idea of a treaty is now supported by more than 60 countries. The World Health Assembly has just decided two weeks ago to start examining such a treaty. It has taken the unprecedented decision to convene a special World Health Assembly in November to legally decide on the launch on formal negotiations. Second important topic, foreign policy. The G7, together with four guest countries, Australia, India, South Africa, and South Korea, will reaffirm our belief in open societies, multilateralism, and democratic values. These values underpin the actions we take, the policies we develop, and the partnerships we build. In this context, Russia will be one of the main topics. G7 partners share similar views on Russia's disruptive activities. The EU condemns illegal, provocative and disruptive Russian activities against the EU, its member states and beyond. I stress this to President Putin in a phone call this week. On the conflict in the eastern Ukraine, I will repeat that we do not see Russia as a mediator, but as a party to the conflict. We do not and will not recognize Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea. At last month's European Council, EU leaders took rapid action against the authorities in Belarus for the forced landing of a flight. This was an attack on democracy, the media and freedom of speech, but also civilian aviation safety. 
and this robust action has set the tone for the international response to this incident. We once again call on the Belarus authorities to immediately release Raman Pratezevich and Sofia Sapega and all political prisoners. At the summit, we will, of course, also discuss our complex relationship with China. The EU's approach is clear. China is a partner, a competitor, and a potential systemic rival. We must strike the right balance for our best interest between engagement and standing firmly by our values. We have to work with China to address global challenges like climate change or regional issues like Afghanistan or the Iran nuclear deals. And economic relations with China are important for economic recovery. At the same time, we will defend ourselves against practices that pose security risks, distort the level playing field, or are incompatible with our values. We continue to stand up to defend human rights and the rule of law in Xinjiang, Hong Kong, and elsewhere. La promotion Promoting our fundamental values uh, and defending human rights is what we wish to do when we are committed, for example, in the Horn of Africa and especially in Ethiopia. We denounce uh, extremely serious violation of human rights and we appeal for mobilization to uh, give humanitarian access. We support uh, the uh, demands for international investigation to uh, establish just how serious the violations have been which we are facing on the ground and uh, to uh, follow up uh, in the way those events deserve. Now I'd like to say a word about financing of development, in particular how uh, this relates to Africa. A new alliance with the African continent, uh, a kind of Marshall Plan for Africa, is the appeal that we have supported to mobilize a debate uh, regards uh, debt uh, relief and restructuring to enhance financing capacity. Secondly, to pursue the debate on special drawing rights uh, at the International Monetary Fund. We need to be several of us uh, in pushing for the 100 billion to be reallocated to the African continent, but also we have to be committed to, to support all efforts uh, to enhance governance and make sure the mobilization of resources be uh, more directly at the service of development projects and social cohesion in the African continent. A few brief words about our commitment to the climate. You know that this is at the heart of our EU priorities. You also know that we have been constant, tenacious, determined uh, in keeping climate change at the top of uh, the agenda, strengthening our 2030 objectives, uh, becoming carbon neutral, and so that we have uh, more prosperity thereby and that we can guarantee respect for our planet. Biodiversity remains a subject we're also committed to, and also we'll have an opportunity to discuss that important matter. So by of conclusion, as you will have understood, there are three key issues as we see it for this summit. Firstly, to restate our democratic values and the rule of law, to restate our ambition as democratic states, to take action, not just to react, to take action to promote our values. Secondly, to work together on the ground in the areas of prosperity, international taxation, corporate taxation, progress uh, has been made uh, thanks to a meeting of G7 finance ministers, the question of levying playing field, the carbon price. These are all subjects that need to be debated. And thirdly, to work together with our partners in an intelligent way, in a positive, constructive way, in order to guarantee stability, to reduce the risk of conflict, uh, to uh, fight off threats, and to find sustainable solutions which are as inclusive as possible. So briefly... That is uh, the framework for how we will be pursuing our work in this uh, G7 meeting.